we're actually working a project right now that is blowing up mm -hmm. on TikTok and it's, it's viral. It's viral. So it's called The Mop and it's by Tisa Korean okay. and it's, um, it's a song about like literally mopping, but there's a <laughs> dance called The Mop. And so it's going crazy on TikTok. Yeah. It's going crazy on Instagram. Now it's starting to blow up stream wise. Wow. And I think it's doing like a million a week, which is insane. On what platform or what? Or streams? I or? think on, on streams, a million. Wow. Uh, on TikTok, I don't have the numbers yeah. offhand, but... It's, it's so it's just, kind of started on TikTok because of the mop, yeah, because of the dance. Or yeah, whatever I mean, that, LeBron yeah. James the other day uh -huh. did a video of him doing the mop with his son. What's going on? Welcome to the New Music Business Podcast. I'm your host, Ari Herstand, author of How to Make It in the New Music Business, the book. So today my guest is Bina Franda. She is the marketing director for Ultra Records. Ultra Records, of course, have artists like Steve Aoki, Maluma, Alexander Stan, Lost Frequencies, Alan Walker, and many, many others. We dig into influencer marketing specifically today. We talk about a bunch of stuff, but the thing that I was actually really interested to learn about since I didn't know much about it was how they get in touch with quote unquote influencers, you know, the people on TikTok who have a bunch of followings. Uh, and when they dance to a certain song, if you ever wondered about how do those TikTok influencers choose which songs to dance? Well, oftentimes it's labels paying them to do that, do those dances or skits or anything like that. So we get into the, the strategies and how that all works. This episode was recorded live from Bina's apartment in Brooklyn. She had just gotten back from a conference and festival herself. Of course, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ari Herstand or at Ari's Take. And then please sign up for the email list. That can be found at ariestake.com, where you'll be notified of all upcoming events and get regular information on the goings-ons in the music industry. So let's cut to the interview from the center of Bina Fronda's apartment in Brooklyn, New York. Bina Fronda, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yeah. So we are in Brooklyn right now. Mm -hmm. This is the second time that I've done something mobile outside of L.A. And I was in town doing some press stuff. So here we are. I'm so happy. Thank you for inviting me into your home. Of course, of course. It's a beautiful space. Thank and, you. Uh, how long have you been in this neighborhood? In this neighborhood, a little over a year, about a year and a half. Okay. And what then is this neighborhood considered? Greenpoint. 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 Yeah. Is that like the Polish district? It is. Uh -huh. Yeah. So if yes. you have some time before yeah. you go, you should definitely get some pierogies. Ah, okay. There's plenty. Pierogies. All right. Good. That's. I need to. I need to start checking off the things on my food list of. New York like it's always a slice it's always a bagel yes. because we don't have good pizza or good bagels in LA and then um and then I always like the halal trucks and so I always get like a chicken over rice or something oh, like yeah. with the hot sauce I don't know what they do with that hot sauce but like every truck it's the most incredibly tasty but also super spicy hot oh, sauce oh yes do you yeah. go to the chicken and rice guy on 53rd street in oh, Manhattan my, I'm gonna have to I guess yeah oh, I don't know about one. this one all right yeah they actually started opening opening up shops for it because it became so popular Whoa. and there's always a line it's across the street from the moma and it's oh. just like one of the most it's the most popular halal truck in new oh, york oh wow uh -huh. okay i went to the moma last time i was in town mm -hmm. i missed that truck shoot okay yeah. <laughs> well, i will definitely go next time next time for sure yeah yeah um cool so um i want to dig into ultra records mm -hmm. because you've been there what five years yep. now yep um so it's Independent, mm -hmm. fully independent, mm -hmm. right? Who distributes Ultra? Well, so now it's through us, but we work with Fuga on it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we also have direct distribution deals with certain DSPs. Oh. So it's a very like custom process, okay. which is how we work, you know? Sure. Uh, so for example, with Apple, it's mm -hmm. uh, direct. With wow. Spotify, it's direct. And okay. then, you know, constantly working towards more direct deals. But hmm. what isn't direct is through Fuga. Gotcha. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, th when, because you're going direct to Spotify and to Apple, I'm the analytics that you receive from them. I mean, is there like a different portal that you get versus what 
artists get mm-hmm. i mean i know there's like this well there's spotify for artists obviously and then mm-hmm. there's spotify for what do they call it like spotify analytics or something like that or yeah so okay. spotify and analytics which is what our digital team like our head of digital will receive uh-huh. and all all of the teams on our on the digital side yeah and our digital team is actually international so we've got okay. a team that's based out here in the states mm-hmm. new york and then we've got people based in the uk france germany who are also not only working towards you know like the apple for Germany, Apple for Russia, but then all of the DSPs that are specific to those local territories. Mm. Um, And so they're, you know, all receiving... Uh, whatever analytics data that they're getting from there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with Apple, so basically Apple Music has uh, Connect, iTunes Connect. And right. so we work through that and then we get artists. That's still uh, a thing? There's still, still a iTunes Connect? There's still yeah. Apple Music still Connect? Thing. Yeah. Wow, yeah. okay, all right. But good. they're they're constantly <laughs> updating it. And yeah. so basically as they're updating it, they're, you know, they're, I mean, they understand how, tra- you know, how important it is to sure. be transparent yes. with data period yes. um and then what you know we go through also what the artists receive as well in terms mm. of data and anal- analytics mm-hmm. as ultimately we're on the same team when we right. want to be able to get the same amount of information so that we know how to act properly right towards Are, the next projects do you get any more or less information than what artists see on their end with with spotify for artists or apple music for artists it depends okay. you know it depends on the project mm-hmm. uh for example, Spotify for artists, artists, if a song gets added to a playlist, they'll yeah. get like a, a ping notification, right? right. right? Mm-hmm. So the digital team. An will official do, playlist yeah. only, not the users. Exactly. Ones, right? yeah, An yeah, official okay. playlist Got only. Yeah. Um, but there are so many tools outside of those type of tools mm. that we use and all labels use mm. in order to be able to pull that information as well. Cool. It's really interesting to see, and, and this is a conversation I have a lot with our, our head, our head of digital on our team yeah. at ultra, which is, you know, like there isn't one like really perfect digital tool yeah. to be able to pull the most accurate information mm. on uh, what coverage you're getting. Yeah. So it's like you have to go through iTunes Connect to make sure you get all the Apple playlists right. and then you have to manually look up at chart metrics to right. see, okay, like what did, what would we get from Spotify worldwide, mm-hmm. you know, and so you're just pulling from all of these different avenues to right. get everything when yeah. if there was one tool that was like very <laughs> accurate internationally yeah. it would save a lot of <laughs> time. I mean, if anyone's uh, out there that wants to develop this tool, to you're going to get a lot it. of clients, right? <laughs> get to <laughs> right. it. I mean, Chartmetric has been an amazing resource and tool, yeah. and that's super cool. I love being able to see um, not just the top 10 most popular playlists that yeah. are playing it, but every single playlist yes. and the most influential users. That's also really cool. You can see like the... Um, you know, I have a I have a playlist, uh, low volume funk, because I've been big into funk music, and I built up my playlist. You know, yeah. user generated. It's like forty thousand followers, but it like generates a lot of monthly listeners. So like in chart metric, I'll be searching some artists who I like, and I'll be one of like the influencer nice. of like of the top things because awesome. of the playlist. So you can kind of see all of that stuff. Um, and um, but yeah, there is not really a centralized. So I mean, um, there've been people over the years that have tried to aggregate a lot of that yeah. data um like uh oh what's that company called that pandora bought and then it's like the pandora backend analytics it's spot on track no it's the other one oh, i can't remember i'll think of it later but mm-hmm. like it's uh they aggregate like social numbers yeah. primarily and pandora stream so it's like now it's so common if you want to check your pandora uh like real analytics you have to go to this other site they've been trying to like combine it integrate all that yeah but either way it's all fragmented it's, um, th- and exactly that's yeah. it right there is there hasn't been able to be like a, a centralized place to mm-hmm. go to and say all of this information is accurate right. like by the day by the country right so you right. know and i think that's something that all labels probably face as a challenge yeah. all the time and we want to be able to provide the most accurate information to all of our artists as like things are happening you right. know so right. so artists are getting these like notifications through spotify maybe sure. through apple but they don't get that that through amazon yeah. and especially if an artist is you know in holland and gets like a nectar playlist cover on amazon they have no clue what's unless, a nectar playlist cover what uh, uh, it's so <laughs> Amazon has a bunch of playlists too, oh. and Nectar is one of their dance playlists. And oh. So like if the, an artist gets a playlist cover opportunity, uh-huh. you know we'll we'll do that for like our dance artists basically. 
Amazon has playlists. Mm -hmm. And so, okay. And people, because I know Amazon has a lot of Amazon Music listeners, users, primarily through Echo and because of Alexa and all of that stuff. Um, But... I guess, I mean, I haven't really gotten into Amazon Music much. Have you looked in there? Have you, are you like, have you used it? Do you know much about it? Yeah, I mean, we're getting more support from Amazon and the playlists on Amazon. So, uh, you know, they have a bunch of different dance playlists. And Mm. so we're usually either getting like playlists, playlist covers, Mm. ads onto that. So there's definitely more initiative. Yeah. Um, Is it to the, you know, is it one of the most seeked out, like a, DSPs right. not sure I think it's yeah. a, a long time coming but you know mm. we we value all of the DSPs sure. all, you know all of the platforms because everybody you know there's no real formula in terms of how people are listening to music right. or discovering music, you want to be everywhere so. you want to reach exactly. everyone um so I mean are you seen specifically with Amazon because they're not really part of the conversation very often mm-hmm. um are you seeing traction from Amazon at all or like the numbers that come in from Amazon? um, Are they even like in the realm of what Apple Music and Spotify is or are they giving you any interesting data that you're receiving that's different from Apple or Spotify? We're still working on getting more uh, clear data from Amazon to the to the extent of which how we get it from Spotify, Spotify or Apple yeah. or how we're saying, OK, you know, like these amounts of streams that are part of the total streams of, of whatever project we're working on yeah. is coming from Apple, is coming from Spotify, is coming from Deezer. Uh, but, mm. you know, I think Amazon is still working all of those out. But, yep. you know, it's, it's constantly progressing. Mm. A couple of years ago, Amazon wasn't even in the question, you know, right, in right, the conversation. Right. Yep. Now Amazon is is listed as one of the main platforms that we're always looking to do marketing or digital uh, activations with. Mm. Same thing goes for SoundCloud. You know, SoundCloud kind of went through a journey journey you know i mean it still is it really uh, is yeah what okay so that's interesting i'm curious how you because what would you say the angle of ultra in terms of genre is it mostly dance mostly edm that kind of yeah i like to say it's everything under the electronic umbrella um so just a little kind of background Mm -hmm. uh so patrick moxie our CEO and founder yeah. got his start in the hip hop world. You okay. know, so he used to manage Gangstar for 15 years. Mm. He, you know, founded NERD. He's he worked right. with everybody under like the hip hop umbrella cool. and has always also had a knack for uh, dance hall and mm. reggae. Mm-hmm. So he's got that as his background. Cool. And when he first started Ultra, you know, he saw that there was a, an open space in the States where no one was really focused on dance music and they there was definitely no dance label at that point. Mm. And so, uh, you know, we came in and we, a, a lot of what we were doing was bringing in artists from abroad, you know, from France, from Italy, from the UK that yeah. had like amazing uh, hits yeah, in the yeah. dance world huh. there and then bringing them over to the States, you yeah. know? And so, and we still do that now, you know, we have, we have so many artists that are from Holland, from France, uh, you know, that we found during Ibiza yeah, and, cool. uh, you know, and now we're working them here in the States. Yeah. Um, so we are primarily electronic, uh-huh. but you know, now that's, there's so much to that. There's, EDM as we know it. Right. There is, you know, crossovers. So we work with a lot of like indie electronic bands, mm. uh, pop crossovers, so yeah. a little bit of everything. How many artists are on the roster right now? Um, it's so active, I would say probably 50, oh, but wow. okay. you know, that they, they go in and out of, uh, you know, being active in terms of having like releases okay. and having albums coming out and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, all together, mm-hmm. more like 80, but okay. in terms of who has stuff going on that we're actively working, yeah. I would say around 50. And is the are the main offices in New York? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, in Chelsea. You, gotcha. And how many people work there? In our office, I would probably say somewhere between 30 and 35. Okay. But we have a lot of international people too. Yeah. 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 How many would you say are over in the international office? I would say all together we're probably 50, okay. maybe a little bit more. So cool. we have an, uh, an office in LA mm-hmm. and that's our sync, uh, primarily our sync team and yeah. A&R. We have uh, two studios in LA as well. Okay. And so many art of our artists either live there or go there. Yeah. So, you know, our studio is 24-7 and it is almost 
almost filled the entire time, wow. which is really amazing. Yeah. Um, and then we also have a team out in Canada. We have a team out in London. And yeah. then, I, you know, we have people like sprinkled everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know? cool. We've got our Asia, our Asia rep, our Scandinavian rep, wow. and, you know, people everywhere. So, yeah. yeah. How long has Ultra been around? Uh, almost 25 years. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's been that yeah. long. Amazing. It's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um, and you were in marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what does that entail when like your, yeah, what is your job? What is your position? I like to say I'm a glorified camp counselor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was a camp counselor back in the day. Hey, me too. I was an <laughs> really? RA in college. There you go. <laughs> That's right. Um, so Shout out Camp Shalom. What's right. up? <laughs> <laughs> right. New Paul Tay. Hey. <laughs> um, so, so basically we, we do everything. I also like to say we're like an extension of management because mm -hmm. we liaise on a day-to-day -day basis with, uh, with management, mm -hmm. with the artists, and then everybody internally. So basically mm. uh, the the marketing team also functions as the product managers. Okay. So when we're working on a project and basically there's a product manager assigned to each artist, mm -hmm. we're working with the management team to set up the entire artist project, right? Okay. So artist vision, what does the artist have coming out? What type of music do they have coming out? Do they have an album, an EP, this, that, and the other? How are we going to market it? You mm -hmm. know, and there's thousands of releases coming out every day. Yeah. Yeah. and thousands being pitched every week how do we stand out right, right? and totally. so we're we're constantly working with the management team and in, in coming up with what the vision is going to be and how to sell it you know and yeah, how to sell yeah. it to the world how to how to pull that artist vision from the artist and then mm. be able to bring it to the masses and so i always say that's how you know externally how we're handling it with sure. artists artist management team working with publicists working with journalists working with potential brand partnerships and yeah. then on an internal level you know, where the connector between all of the departments, making sure they're getting all of the information of what the artist project is, you know, how does the artist want to be perceived? What yeah. is this album about? How mm. are we going to tie it with marketing activations around the album? Mm -hmm. So then that pitch gets taken and, and brought over to, you know, like music supervisors. Hey, we've got this song coming out, right. you know, it, these are the lyrics. Maybe it fits with this show yeah, or this yeah. opportunity or this brand. So so we're constantly connecting everything. Yeah, that I mean yeah. that that's that makes sense. Um, it sounds like a lot, but let's break it down to. Uh, so what's a recent release that you've had that you worked on? Uh, recently, I worked with Steve Aoki and okay. Maluma on this song called Maldad. Okay, so let just the song, mm -hmm. like single. Okay, mm -hmm. so take us through the whole yeah. journey of how that went, and then and the release and just everything. Sure. That went so that. there's two potential avenues in terms of when the song gets created, right? Okay. So there's either the artist brings it in. Uh -huh. So in the case of Steve Aoki, Steve, you know, Steve has been around in the industry for a while, mm -hmm. and Steve has incredible connections with artists because you know, that's who he is, right. Right? right? He goes out, he meets them, he gets in the studio with them. And then he calls us and is like, I got Maluma, on the phone. Yeah. you know, like I got yeah. Maluma. This is cool. great. I want to put it out. This is so exciting. Yeah. So that's in the case of Steve, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. And then there's also other opportunities where, you know, we, we are constantly matchmaking artists and producers, okay. writers, producers, uh, singer songwriters, whoever it is to see yeah. what's, what's going to be made, like cool. what's going to happen in the studio. And then we release that. Sure. So there are different ways in terms of how the song you know, gets formed mm -hmm. and then it's like a relay race, you know? So then the A&R team brings it over to the marketing side and says, the song is ready. Okay. We're ready to put it, you know, put it out into the world. Sure. And so with Steve Aoki and Maluma, mm -hmm. that's what happened. The baton is passed to the marketing team okay. and we get to work. So, yeah. you know, with Steve, we, we figure out, okay, well, what, what's the creativity, you know, we want to use behind this? What's the angle we want to take? So okay. for Steve, for example, this is, this isn't the first time that he works with an artist in the Latin space. Mm. Uh, two years ago, he worked with Daddy Yankee and mm. playing skills with Elvis Crespo on mm -hmm. this song called Azuquita. And the song did extremely 
extremely well. Mm. It, like, you know, did huge on the radio and in Italy and Spain and France and did really well on like US Latin radio here. Sure. They performed it together at Ultra Music Festival. Yeah. So, you know, Steve has a really great connection with the Latin dance scene and sure. the US Latin dance scene. So when Maluma came on board, you, you know, we already knew, okay, well, we're going to bring somebody on board who does US Latin press and, mm. you know, target all of those type of playlists, all of those radio opportunities. So, so okay, US, uh, US Latin press. So that means you link up with a PR company yep. that specializes in that. Yes. Okay. And then, um, so even before that though, so what was the... You, you mentioned like before you want to get like the story yeah. or you want to like get the artist vision out. So what kind of assets did you have mm -hmm. um, before you started to engage these outside parties? Mm -hmm. Like did they come to you and say this song is about this or we are thinking of these images or what what was that? About? Yeah. So what you know, when when we got the song song, you know, song sure. comes over. Uh huh. First thing we think is, okay, what's the creative going to be behind this? And what do so, you mean by creative? By creative, I mean, what's the art going to look like? Okay. Is Maluma going to be in a video with Steve? Are we going to do a video? Okay. In the case of Latin music and dance music, but even more so Latin music, yep. video is very important. Sure. And video on YouTube is very important. Yep. So, you know, figuring out the schedules between Steve and Maluma mm. to get them in the same place at the same time sure. to do an official video together, which is very hard because they both have insane right, touring right. schedules, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we make magic happen, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so getting them t together, w coming up with a concept. So going through different types of treatments uh -huh. uh, in terms of what's what's the video going to look like. Okay. So in the case of the Steve, the song is called Maldad, which means like naughty in okay. dialect, in like uh, Spanish dialect. Okay. So, you know, we played along that, you know? So Mal Maluma winds up being the naughty one and that's what the lyrics are about. And yeah. Steve is the angel quote yeah. Unquote, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know <laughs> and uh and so we played along that and so what we did was okay that was the theme around the video let's make that theme across everything else ah. so the artwork reflected that our marketing activations reflected that we did instagram lenses stickers all that kind so of it kind of stuff. came a lot of the visual direction uh came initially from the music video treatment the, the treatment of the video which really is just just reflective of the lyrics of the song. But in the in the song, is is Maluma the the naughty one and Stevie Aoki is the nice one? Or he whatever. sings like, about. I mean, yeah. Maluma is the one singing on the song, yeah. so he sings about you know, like he's talking about the girl, yeah. like referring to a girl being right. a maldad, you know, so being oh, like a naughty girl. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Yeah. So in the lyrics, they did that, and so when when we go out to get treatments yeah. and we go to different production companies, say you know, saying, hey, this is our budget. This this is what we're working with. This is the schedule that we're working with. Mm -hmm. What can you do if you're mm -hmm. interested in doing it? We always send the song and the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So they're, you know, they can already start picking up from there, you know, what their vision is. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we wound up working with a director in New York mm -hmm. um, and, you know, she came up with this concept. And so. And then you took that concept um, and then. So the art wasn't wasn't created before the video or treatment rather. So like you didn't come up with a like, did you come up with an album cover single cover before the video or that kind of came together? It was simultaneous. Yeah. It was simultaneous because of scheduling in this case. Okay. Sometimes we can pull artwork from the video depending on when everything is shot. Yeah. Um, but what we did for the video here is we already knew what the treatment was going to be, so mm -hmm. we kind of just took inspiration from the treatment. Mm. But the you you know, the artwork is images of the two of them. Mm. For Maluma, actually, we did wind up using an image from the video. Okay. And then from Steve, I think we might have used a, a former press shot that was somewhat aligned okay. with the concept of the video sure. and then just like put them together. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. And then so you were you playing or did you release the video the same yes, day as the song? Yes, we did same day. So same day. Okay. with with the video in this case, especially being that the video was such an important piece of the release strategy, mm -hmm. we did a YouTube premiere mm. using their premiere function, which is still somewhat of a new tool. Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, so basically it's a pre-save for YouTube. 
oh, essentially. Okay. So it's still quite new, yeah. um, but it's been it's been great. We've been doing it for a couple of projects. So mm. the way it works is you set up a page mm-hmm. where the video is going to be t- to live sure. with just an image and a countdown. Uh, so people can already cool. start commenting on it and oh, you fun. have a countdown leading up to when the video will go live. Uh, when it goes live, so basically you click to be notified. Yeah. When it goes live, mm-hmm. you get notified, you tune into the video as do thousands of other people and right. you can live comment uh. as it's going and the artist can live comment too. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. so it's really cool and it's a really uh, awesome option if maybe you don't want to work with a media partner mm-hmm. or you know you just want to try something new. And yeah. So that's what we did okay. there and you know it's it's awesome like we've done it with multiple artists across the board and yeah. in the first 3 minutes you get thousands of people tuned in watching the video. Amazing. That's yeah. great. That's cool. Yeah. Um okay, so so we have you have the art that came from the video so you have the video treatment Mm -hmm. um uh you have the art from that what other assets do you need for a release so then you start looking at what assets might be specific to certain platforms right so uh apple does Uh swipe up saturdays where you pitch it it's basically they support projects on socials on saturdays so day after release the official Uh release day and it's on instagram stories so it's a swipe up video so artists can make a video Uh and submit it to get uh, feature so on Apple Music's Instagram account, Apple Music's and Instagram, and they'll feature some videos like little 15 second clips, exactly. swipe up to the Apple Music exactly. Streaming. I got yeah. it, yeah. Okay. So it'll either be mm. to the song, cool. the video, if the video is available on Apple Music. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, those type of assets we start gathering them weeks in advance. If we know we have Steve and Maluma at a shoot together, yeah. we do it, we crank everything out, we do photos, huh. we do all of the type of assets that we need for the different DSPs. All of, you know, liners, quotes, all yeah. of that kind of stuff. We'll do it when we know we have them for a few hours. Yeah. So we'll take it during their downtime. So, you know, for example, we have the Apple Swipe Up Saturdays. Uh-huh. SoundCloud is now doing, doing it on their socials too. So there's a, a um, swipe up uh, like videos that they request from artists. Are you focusing on SoundCloud? Like SoundCloud is still part of the conversation. SoundCloud is still, yes, especially, okay. especially now that it is monetized. Right. Uh, yes. You know, and so okay. many of our artists were discovered on SoundCloud right, right. or got their first big break on SoundCloud. So, you know, we've, you know, we consider it like any other platform, you know? Huh. Um, and so uh, there is still a lot of opportunity around them and a lot of marketing opportunities too. You know, huh. they, you know, if uh, fans have the app on their phone, yeah. we can do push notifications, we can do newsletters, oh. we can do social coverage. So there's still opportunity yeah. for artists to get really cool coverage from, uh-huh. from SoundCloud, from Amazon, from Deezer. Deezer is another great example too. So Deezer is massive in France. In France. Right. And still has a following nowhere, you know, near in the U.S. Mm-hmm. as in France. Mm-hmm. But there's still opportunities to get playlist covers, mm-hmm. to do really cool like mix takeovers and stuff like that. Okay. So we still look and ask for the opportunities where it makes sense for our artists. Cool. Um, okay. So you have so each DSP likes some other kind of creative stuff. Like mm-hmm. Spotify has the visualizer or something that you'll get for yeah, that song. Yeah. So right? they have their Spotify canvas. So that's a great example of an asset that we prepare in they call advance. It canvas? Is it's that called what it's a canvas. Okay. So basically, it's a 10 second loop yeah. when you're uh, playing the song within the app, uh-huh. and it's like a, a loop of the video, right. a loop of the lyrics, whatever it may be. On the phone, mobile On the phone. only, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, there are also video opportunities that you can do, and then you can also see that on desktop, but that's a, it's separate and not as common There's as video the on Spotify. There is, yeah, on yeah. desktop. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen this yeah. yet. Okay. It's huh. it, yeah, it's kind of I mean, I'm never really paying attention to video on yeah, this in that right, in the same right, right. way but, as, you know, as that, but yeah, okay. you do see it. Yeah. Huh, cool. So, um do you have like I mean, I I know that people are listening to this right now and it's like, "Oh my gosh, this is so much like so many different kinds of creative specific things." Like yeah. is there a list anywhere? Oh, is there 
Yeah, like, I add the, on. So I have like a list on my desktop. <laughs> you of have like, the list. Okay. I have a list. All the pro- product managers, y'all know. <laughs> yeah, okay. You know, okay. we have, and, and so do like the digital team has their like checklist or okay, did you get this, did you get that? The creative team has a different checklist because, okay, so we make the cover art. Mm-hmm. All right, we've got that. We'll probably need a composite shop because if we get an opportunity for a billboard, mm-hmm. let's say through to Spotify or YouTube does billboards, you know, we want to have the image on hand ready to go of Steve and Maluma together or, you know, any other artist. You know, I saw Chelsea Cutler got like a really great billboard the same day that Steve and Maluma did. Mm. Um, You know, so having that ready, uh, having social banners ready for all of the artists to be able to swap to all of their socials on day of release. Yeah. Um, Any type of teasers ready with the pre-save link and stuff like Mm -hmm. that. So that's all like some of the creative, like the most standard creative that you know that you'll need yeah um on the digital side making sure okay so we've got the swipe up videos for you know uh-huh. uh, apple we got the swipes for for soundcloud spotify in the uk starting to implement it into their socials too so maybe like it'll start, for them yeah or, okay. for swipe up mm. videos so we've done it for some projects mm-hmm. um you know uh and whatever else the DSPs might want or need. Yeah. Many times they want the composite shot for a, pl- a playlist cover or mm-hmm. something like that. So, um, you know, Steven and, and Maluma were uh, on a playlist cover. Um, I think it was maybe Viva Latino or okay. uh, potentially, I don't remember. Sure. But, you know, we have the image. You just have a, no. at the ready. Do you, it, it, uh, ready. where do you host all this stuff? Do you, is there like a folder in a mm-hmm. Dropbox or something yeah. and then all the assets go there? Yeah, Dropbox is a godsend. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. You so know? everybody just kind of pops it into the box, yeah. into Dropbox. And okay. we're so heavy, heavily international yeah. that that seems for us yeah. seems to be the tool that works most efficiently mm. because our team from Canada, Germany, wherever can mm-hmm. just go in there and there's the updated bio. There's all of the social banners ready to go. There's the press release that's approved and uh, ready. And, you know, like there's a write up about the song, a one sheet, the updates, the re- the latest reports, and everybody can just like pull and the same yep. information is available to everyone, mm. you know, instead of just like forwarding, forwarding, forwarding. So you have all this information, you have all the assets, they're mm-hmm. in the folders. Um, now, what is uh, part of the, the rollout, the marketing, like... Um, what do you do? Is, is there like a standard uh, operating procedure that you do for yeah. every release or do you get specific, do you come up with more specific, uh, creative marketing strategies for each release? Like how does that work yeah. and when does that those conversations begin and then when do you start to implement them? We get pretty specific. Okay. It always depends on a project and it depends on the artist and Uh it depends on the concept, right? So, you know, if we have a song that we got to put it out tomorrow, we just got to get it out. You know, we're focused on getting it out. We're focused on servicing to all the correct people. We're, you know, focused on getting it out to press and radio and whoever it may be. So it doesn't give us a lot of time for creativity. But then we also have projects where you know we have time and we have a really cool concept in our hands you know so for Steve and Maluma you know we already had this concept we knew about the song for months Mm. we already started the marketing uh like ideation process months in advance you know so we did a really cool campaign with Zumba so Zumba has been uh like a big supporter uh, supporter of our songs Zumba Uh, Zumba yeah so Zumba they're like workout oh uh, yeah okay Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. My mom's a Zumba queen, so <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Uh, Funny. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Zumba, uh, I mean, this kind of sound works really well with them because sure. it's high impact, like in high intensity, uh-huh. and there's the like you know Latin influence mm. that is part of like the of the Zumba culture. Cool. So uh, every month, Zumba does uh, servicing out to their teachers where they highlight a specific song. Mm. And so for the month of February, which was just a few weeks after the song was released, mm-hmm. Maldad was their song of focus. Oh, and cool. so the, all of the teachers, they, they came up with a choreography that gets sent out to all of the teachers. Yeah. And the teachers are considered influencers. Oh, you know, So wow. they're all posting on their socials and supporting it and adding it to all of their playlist so it's it's organic because we're just suggesting to the teachers hey like we really like this song we made a choreography put it in your classes if you want to yeah 
and it, it did really well. And actually, so Zumba has their own Spotify playlist that has Whoa. over a million followers. And wow. the song went to the top of the playlist because it did so well and is still at the top of the playlist. So if there is an artist or a manager or an indie out there who thinks that the Zumba would be good for them, like, how do you contact Zumba? Who is who's <laughs> Zumba? Like, who is in charge of that stuff? Who runs the Zumba po- Spotify playlist? <laughs> Honestly, slide into the DMs. <laughs> really? All right, you heard it here. Right? I mean, you know, we we right. we have a, a. You've developed a relationship. We've developed yeah. a relationship with them yeah. through the years okay. of working on previous projects. <laughs> and Zumba has really cool initiatives too. You know, they did um, this uh, this series mm. where they were working with artists and producers to make songs to sp- specifically for Zumba wow. so that the song like was made for it perfectly cool. to go with the choreography. Oh, wow. And they worked with Steve Aoki and they worked with Dioro and they worked with a lot, a lot of other really cool producers. Sure. And you know, that was all part of this really amazing concept. And huh. then they did uh, shows around it and really cool content around it wow. and everything. So, you know, we've, we've been, we've had this relationship with them through these other types of experiences. So, mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when we had this song out, we were like, well, yeah, we got to get Zumba involved. They're going to love yeah, yeah, it, you know, yeah. but these conversations start to happen months in advance. You know, okay. if you're if you want to get a TV look, you know, mm-hmm. so if you want to get uh, um, anybody to perform on a Fallon or a Kimmel or something like that, those start getting booked out months in advance. Okay. So at minimum, you have to start talking to them three months in advance mm. if you want really cool press looks. Did so. you have the, the, um, the song, the master months in advance to be able to send that around? We had or? we had a demo. We okay. had a demo. So okay. as soon as we had a demo that that it, everybody was in agreement that this was pretty much what the final was going to sound like. Okay. Um, you know, we started sending it around. What's or the difference USA? between a demo and the master then? If it's what? uh, it wasn't mixed and mastered yet. Oh, okay. There was production tweaks that just needed to be finalized. Gotcha. You know, cleaned up a bit. Gotcha. But. So it was like probably the final vocal yes, take and everything, exactly. and, and the production was pretty set except you're just going to keep evolving keep mixing it and exactly. I, I gotcha yeah. sweetening it so the final okay. was like cleaner sure and, that you makes know. sense um so we had that but also the fact that we knew just telling people hey we've got this song with steven maluma every you know people's ears perked up right, like, oh, right tell right. me more sure. what does that sound like you know yeah so that i mean i love the zumba <laughs> angle yeah. what other what other kind of uh avenues did you work for marketing with this yeah so we did a heavy influencer marketing campaign what around this mean? and we did we did multiple influencer marketing okay. campaigns so we did you know a more traditional one which is instagram influencers and okay. so we specifically worked with a lot of instagram influencers that were in the latin space that were just doing like funny takes on the song so we had this like one kid that you know he was naughty because he was eating like a burrito or something <laughs> you know and that wow. was his maldad you yeah. know and so he was like dancing with the burrito or something like that and then yeah. we had you know like uh dancers doing a dance to it and and yeah. Dance ones, they do really well. You know, any mm. kind of dance content sure. as well. I might be a little biased because I am a former dancer. Okay, so, cool. yeah, I'm always like, we need dance influencers. <laughs> yeah. Um. So we worked with uh, influencers mainly within Instagram, the Instagram space. And who are these people and how do you find them? And what, what does that deal even look like? Yeah. So, you know what? A lot of it is still, it can be really organic in okay. the sense that, you know, you hit them up directly and you say, Hey, like, I love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. We want you to be involved with this record that we have coming out. We think you could be really cool for it. Mm. Let's talk, you know, and sometimes we talk money and Mm -hmm. sometimes we talk exposure. You know, it really all depends on uh, who the artist is, what their coverage is, the bigger the influencer chances are the more money that they're asking for sure. for their type of content there are agencies now too that's sort right. of doing that so right. there are agencies that basically they just like you know there are a lot of them like we have work with one agency where it's like a 19 year old but just knows all the influencers so <laughs> wow. they're the connect they're wow. the plug to the oh influencers God. you know <laughs> well the 19 year olds are the gatekeepers now yeah. of the industry right that's it's the crazy. same thing that's like hilarious. youtube third party you sure. know a lot of youtube third party um curate Creators, huh. they got their start really young mm-hmm. and there was a business to be made yeah, over there, yeah. you know? Um, so, so there are agencies that you can go through and then sure. you say, this 
is our budget. This is the type of content that we're looking for. What can we do? You know, and they'll say, okay, we can get you 10 influencers for this amount, 12, inf- whatever it is might be. Is there like a standard like CPM for mm. influencers these days or not? I guess it wouldn't be a CPM, but is there some kind of um, just like standard rate that you kind of, the industry standard rate for that? So it's like, okay, this influencer has... A million followers and their engagement is five yeah. percent or whatever their stories get x number of views like is there kind of an equation where you know all right then this would cost us three thousand dollars to get a post versus yeah. like you know fifteen hundred for a story or i don't know you know i have no idea what, yeah. what, what does that even look like the conversations really aren't like that yet okay. i think it's still quite uh, okay this art this influencer has this many followers uh-huh. this is the type of engagement they're getting for every post we kind of you know, will kind of uh, estimate how much we think we should be paying hmm. they'll give us a number sometimes it's what we think we should be paying sometimes it's not can you give us a ballpark of like what does that even look like i mean sometimes it could be like 300 bucks and sometimes it could be like 10k you know wow so it's just it's all it's all over okay it's all over and i think until it becomes a system you know like you know like Like you said yeah Mm -hmm. it's going to be like that but for now you know working with the agencies kind of uh does that a little bit Mm -hmm. you know and at least you know you're getting a certain amount of uh, postings, artists, influencers that you can work with through the agency for a specific budget. Yeah. But if you're reaching out to them independently, yeah. then, I mean, it's and sometimes in a way they're like shooting their shot, you know, yeah, they're right, like, right, right. I need 20 K <laughs> for this. Post. We like worked with, with this. I remember there was this influencer we really wanted. It was a couple of years ago for this mm-hmm. project. And it, it, it was her, her daughter. Her daughter was like three years old and just making this funny, funny con- co- uh, content. Okay, uh-huh. maybe she was like six, whatever. Right. Um, and they asked us for 30K oh for, my a gosh, post. for a post. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, oh, good right. luck. Yeah, <laughs> right. Know? It was not happening. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're an indie. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> um, so it didn't happen. So, But some people do, you know, mm. and a lot of companies do have the budget for it and, and will pay for it. So, mm. you know, it's either direct agencies and then it depends the type of influencers. So, you know, in the case of Steve, we were working with a lot of Latin influencers and dance, dance ones, but there's comedic influencers. Uh, there's, you know, uh, dance influencers specific to the dance space. Well, let's so, break down what, what you mean by influencer. Yeah. So what do you mean there's a Latin influencer? What does that look like specifically? Yeah. So when I say that yeah. Latin influencer within that space, you know, they're either making content in Spanish. If they're dancers, they're dancing. Like there's, there's dancers that are salsa dancers. Ah. And so all of so like their, their videos Instagram are salsa. Profi- yeah. 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 So, so they're, they're salsa profi- dancing yeah. on their Instagram profile yeah. and they just get a bunch of followers. And so obviously these people love yeah. their dancing or Latin music, salsa yes. music, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. The, let's say the Zumba teachers, right? Like mm. their, most of their content is going to be like Latin leaning songs and yeah. they're doing videos to Latin leaning songs. So chances are the people that are following them are going to be all people that like that type of sound. Uh-huh. So that's the demographic that we're going for. Yeah. And also, you know, when we're doing these type of, of projects, we want to, you know, we want to be like true to the concept and, yeah. res, you know, respectful. You know, if we're, if we're, if we're doing a, a Latin dance campaign, we're mm-hmm. not going to go, you know, go for something that's not inclusive of that, of that music, that sound in that community. You know, we want to be inclusive of the community community gotcha. when we're working with so it. it's so. almost looking at uh who is the audience that you're looking to target yeah and so it's not just based on genre necessarily it's it's thinking about like who are the the fans that will yeah. respond to this song now where do these fans exist what um influencers as we call them uh, you know or just like what instagram accounts are they following yeah right so you're mm-hmm. kind of breaking it down like that so it's like let's go find these fans that would respond well to this song mm-hmm. oh they happen to be following these instagram accounts uh they're you know uh quote unquote influencers which just people with lots yeah. of followings um and then we we want to get on those accounts because that's where our audience is, right? Absolutely. So then you go to those accounts, you go to those those people, those influencers is the term now, and <laughs> right, and then and you say, okay, what does that then look like? So you said like we love the content you make. So give us an example for this song 
um, some of the influencers that you engaged, if you can like reveal their like names or, or mm-hmm. just like, what do they do? Like what, like specifically, how does that even look? Yeah. What are they doing? Um, so one of the influencers that we worked with, and this was in connection to the influencer campaigns, but using an agency actually. Okay, so sure. her name is Bryn Nicole Bryn and Nicole. Bryn Nicole is, a. Uh, a dancer and mm-hmm. a dance influencer that's based out in LA. And okay. so she's known to do these really awesome videos in her studio and she does classes. Mm. So, you know, she'll in, in her video pieces that she does, she'll do a dance to the song and then mm-hmm. she shows her students doing it. And mm. so you get, it's like multiple tiered, right you know, in, yeah. influencer kind of posts. Cause you've get, you get the influencer herself uh-huh. and then her students that maybe they're influencers too, but they're doing mm. the dance to it. Um, And, you know, with this song, especially there was a big focus around dance influencers because, you know, ultimately we knew it was a great dance song. So she has 106,000 followers. Mm -hmm. Um, She's doing, let's see what this most recent video is. Okay. So she's dancing here. And so I'm assuming you're lining all of these people up to like post the week the song comes out kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's week and then after because we don't want to uh, release all of our goodies at once. Right. In a sense. like, And we want we want to spread things out. So there's constant new content coming out. So, you know, in this case, we had Bryn's video actually didn't come out the day of the release. It came out a week later, a week Mm. and a half later. But we had you know, we had for this song specifically, we had a Spotify billboard in Times Square and in Toronto. Oh, wow. We had a bunch of, we had new music Fridays on Spotify. I think we had 32 new music Fridays on Spotify, wow. Apple music coverage, uh, Deezer coverage, Amazon coverage, yeah. like e- every, everything, a incredible. really incredible international rollout. Sure. Um, and then we also had a bunch of Latin countries, like billboards across Latin countries, mm. snipe campaigns going live. So everything, all of that happened on the day of, mm-hmm. then a couple of days later, the influencer account started adding on. And then we started doing like influencer posts. We also had a TikTok campaign. So similarly to Instagram, but yeah. a younger demographic. Wow. It's, I was going to ask about TikTok. I'm curious yeah. how you're approaching TikTok. Yeah. Um, did you find it? I want to. No, sorry, I'm like getting sidetracked. No, I know, I know. I want to, um, because like I'm also, uh, we're going to get into TikTok in a minute, but I'm curious about the Instagram thing because, uh, do they have to put in there like ad, hashtag ad, or like, it, well, now they have that, that, uh, thing at the top where it'll say this was in partnership with like Ultra Music. That's yeah, okay. Um, it's like a, it's in part partnership with Ultra Music or something like that. Or, we try or to keep it organic. Yeah. So it's more just having the sound for us as long as they're using the song yeah. and, and, uh, but I'm, like the legalities it. around it now, do they have to say like this is an ad or this is a partnership with with Ultra Records or with Stevie Aoki or something? It or? doesn't say it yet. Okay. I'm sure that that as as the business continues yeah. to bloom because of the TikTok. whole Fire Festival yeah. fiasco, you know, yeah. that's like when they came back out and like Instagram's policy now yeah. um, is that like they have to reveal when there's paid partnerships or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I'm sure that, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I haven't seen that on TikTok yet, but it doesn't okay. mean it won't happen. Oh, no, my, I mean on Instagram. Oh, yeah. On yeah. Instagram, yeah. yeah but it do, doesn't, yeah. on the influencer content, I, ha- I haven't seen it on there. I wonder if it sure. gets a little uh, tricky yeah. be- when it's like in relation with art, like with artists, mm-hmm. you know, because some of them are also just like, some of them are friends with the artist. Right, so they're right. doing it because, you know, like, for example, we but did if a they're camp- being paid, that's technically a, po- a you know, a partnership, yeah. a sponsorship that they like, you know, I'm curious because I, I'm always wondering when I see influencers yeah. and they, they're they using a song or they're like talking about a movie or something like that. I'm like, hmm, are yeah. they being paid for this or yeah. what? <laughs> and they probably some, are. <laughs> yeah, no, they probably are. So, okay. Um, is it part of the deal that they have to keep it up on their account for a little while or they yeah, take it down? Yeah, most of them usually do. Okay. Like most of them won't take it down like after it goes up. Yeah. Though sometimes you might see that. So sure. if you know it, uh, influencer yeah. does that. He'll talk to them about keeping it keep up. It for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But most of them just will tend to like keep it up there, especially cool. if they're proud of the content that they made. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like it. It can be a win-win for all. You know, sure. like we did an influencer campaign with this one uh, one influencer around the song "Best Friend" with Sophie Tucker, mm-hmm. and that blew up for the influencer too. Oh, you know, really? she wound okay, up getting cool. like millions uh, on the engagement, wow. and it just it it went so perfectly, and people were reposting hmm. it like crazy. So wow. I mean, for her. 
her. It worked yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, cool. <laughs> so in terms of TikTok. Yeah. How is that working? Are there agencies for TikTok influencers? It's a whole other ball game. So there are. There are agencies for TikTok as well. Mm -hmm. Um, To be fully transparent, we do everything direct with TikTok so far. We've got a really good connection with a lot of TikTok influencers. So we just work with them directly. How do you find them? Um, You know, some people from our team, our mm-hmm. marketing team, are just really into just TikTok. Going through TikTok and like, and like making note the of influence. the people. Yeah. Who, yeah. And yeah. they're just reaching out to them directly. We also, you know, we have um, a constant like connection and conversation with the marketing team over at TikTok. So mm-hmm. we work with them on oh. some ideas, right? So they they have a content team, they have a marketing team, they have, a, you know, a music team. And so they'll, we'll kind of meet with them on a quarterly basis and say, Hey, we've TikTok got this headquarters, like official at the TikTok, TikTok headquarters in LA. Okay. We go out there and we'll say, we've got these songs coming up. What do you think? Oh. You know, should we do something with Steve? Should we do something with this artist? Mm-hmm. And then some artists really like it. Sometimes the artists will be in contact with TikTok directly uh. and they'll do a bunch of stuff. So, you know, so we'll talk to them about what projects we have coming up. Uh-huh. They'll talk to us about what concepts they have coming up. So, okay. for example, they have these activations called tent pole activations okay. where they come up with an idea and then they align a song with the idea. So, uh, in October, they did Rocktober. Uh-huh. And so they did like a lens or a filter uh-huh. where it looked like the person doing the TikTok was crowd surfing. Huh. And it did really well and it Fun. was to raise awareness uh in in rock yeah. because there wasn't really a big rock following on tiktok right and it did extremely well mm. and so they aligned it with like blink 182 songs <laughs> and good charlie you know like they, right, they, right, they went right. all out with yeah. with it but it worked you know and so mm. and uh you know if they whenever they have other concepts if they're doing something let's say around pride weekend or something okay. like that you know we'll talk to them and say hey we've got these songs in might align like let's yeah. do it so you know, we've done some some of their tent poles before. So that's going officially working with TikTok, TikTok directly, yeah. mm-hmm. and that it, it, I mean, are those partnerships or are they just mutually beneficial? I mean, are there is there money that's changed hands? No there? money involved. Okay. It's mutually beneficial. Gotcha. It's um, you know, it's the same kind of like pitch strategy that you would pitch for playlist coverage, okay. right? Because they're featuring the song. It's just a little bit more involved. Mm-hmm. The biggest thing and is that the artist should be involved on TikTok, right? You're the artist really isn't gonna get as far if they're not engaged in TikTok and doing posts and stuff like that. Oh. Right. So when there's a concept, so we did a concept, uh, maybe about a year ago with Sophie Tucker uh-huh. and it was called, uh, like walk the runway or okay. something, the runway. Yeah. And, um, we aligned it with one of Sophie Tucker's songs mm-hmm. and people just like had fun. And so people would post it and the hashtag was already made and the song was aligned with the song slash sound was right. aligned with the hashtag. Mm. And then, uh, TikTok, you know, would post it out, would push out the Sophie Tucker post that they did with it. They would push out fan posts. So Sophie Tucker did a post official TikTok yeah. with hers, with the song. Yes. And what, what was that? What was the official, like, what was her post or that tiktok so they did what a rendition of walking down the runway oh, okay yeah okay. so cool. the the whole concept behind this activation that tiktok started mm-hmm. is making anything out of a runway right okay. so walking down the grocery store and it's like ah, you know walk your runway right, or something right, right. like that Cute. and so it was i think it was to maybe it was to batshit crazy if i'm not mistaken okay um and you know like yeah. you just see people walking down the grocery store the sidewalk yeah. uh, you know, like in the middle of the street right. and oh, whatever fun. is Cute. their runway. And so they, they used that song. And okay. so, and then TikTok featured the song on their main homepage. They, ah. it was the top featured, um, hashtag because that was the concept that they were rolling out sure. for the week or the month. Sometimes they align it with events. So, you know, like let's say for the Oscars, they have like something around the Oscars or yeah. something like that, or something around Coachella. Yeah. So, you know, we're ha- constantly having like open conversations with TikTok of, all right, what do you have that might might work with our artists? What do we have that might yeah. work with whatever ideas you have coming up? 
And then TikTok also has like influencer meet and greets. So mm. where you can invite influencers to shows or you can invite influencers to meet an artist or whatever it may be. So there's a lot of opportunity mm -hmm. with the uh, platform directly. And then there's opportunity with the influencers that come up through the platform that you just And how do talk you then message directly. or find, get in touch with these influencers who might be, you know, underage? They will either have contact information on their profile mm. or contact information to their management on their profile, uh, okay. especially if they're big. Wow. This is similar to, similarly to Instagram, you know? Management. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> okay. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Crazy. And so then. Like similar, paying for college out here, right, you seriously, know? Right. Oh, my gosh. So, so, um, but similarly, they, you'll just work out some kind of deal, rate, yeah. price, whatever, and yeah. then they'll. Uh, do you work out a concept too? Like say, hey, for the runway thing, this is kind of what we're running with. You yeah. Know, maybe something along the lines of this and then yeah. they do it. And, okay. Exactly. I think with TikTok, um, there, a lot of people will do uh, a, a dance mm -hmm. activation mm -hmm. or a specific dance or, right. you know, like uh, if we want something that's a little bit more comedic. So, you know, around Maldad, we did more like comedic type of influencers and okay. not so much dance or sing along influencers. So the more you kind of know what direction you want to take, yeah. the better it is for you to then give that direction to the influencers. Because if you don't, then they're yeah. going to do whatever the, they want, right. which might work in some cases. Yeah. And it, but if you already have like a, a specific concept you want to roll out mm -hmm. then yeah you just work that out with them so that's okay do you do you see um do you see that these influencer campaigns are effective in like what do you what, how do you gauge effectiveness with an influencer campaign yeah i mean in the case of of steven maluma mm -hmm. in the first week of doing the tiktok campaigns in a couple of days we had almost two million like views uh under the hashtag under like the songs hashtag. so you can then you can look at the hat you can yeah where do you see analytics of this stuff on tiktok from that you can gather it like through their feeds through their main feeds and uh -huh. you can see like how much uh of it is through that okay and you know i mean i think like you don't get the same type of dating analytics that you're getting from some of the other like actual music platforms sure. so it's a little bit more organic mm -hmm. um and but because of that it's also not as uh accurate mm. as you would like it to be um but you know you also start gauging like how many people are reposting it how many people are doing it without you having to pay them right, or you know right. like how is it just catching on mm. we're actually working a project right now that is blowing up mm -hmm. on tiktok and it's, it's viral it's viral so it's called The Mop and it's by Tisa Korean okay. and it's um, it's a song about like literally mopping, but there's a <laughs> dance called The Mop. Of and so it's going crazy on TikTok. Yeah. It's going crazy on Instagram. Now it's starting to blow up stream wise. Wow. And I think it's doing like a million a week, which is insane. On what platform or what or streams? I or? think on, on streams, a million. Wow. Uh, on TikTok, I don't have the numbers yeah. offhand, but... It's, it's so it's just, kind of started on TikTok because of the mop, yeah, because of the dance. Or yeah, I mean, that, LeBron yeah. James the other day uh -huh. put, did a video of him doing the mop with his son. And that, Does he have a TikTok? I don't think he has a TikTok, <laughs> but on <laughs> Instagram. Instagram well, yeah, a, lot, yeah. a lot of people are reposting their TikToks on Instagram Them, stories. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, okay, and, okay. So, and, and then it, that mm. is getting like the coverage there. Sure, sure. Um, <laughs> and I mean, like the mop is... Wow. It's going crazy. Right, it's right, going crazy. Cool. But it's like such a specific concept and it works. You know, yeah. what do you need people to do? You need them to do the mop, right, you know? Right, so like right. there you have it. And now it's just like, it's going wild. It's wow. going wild. So yeah, I mean, I've always wondered about how influencer campaigns look and work. And I guess right now it's really Instagram and TikTok, I suppose, mm -hmm. right? Are there any, do you work with YouTubers? Is that even a thing anymore? Are there YouTubers? It, we work with YouTubers more on YouTube playlisting, mm. especially in the dance world. It's really big. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. So third party playlists yep. that are curating really awesome um, like cover art videos and they're just putting them on playlists and cool. they're supporting songs and they just get like millions of looks. And do they upload directly to their channel mm -hmm. or do they can they take your song and put they can't Either. take your oh, they, you, they can playlist yours. Okay. Like if they have a playlist, they can playlist yours. Mm. But most most of the t time they're doing an upload of yours and then you're manually claiming a song through the back end. So you can monetize yeah, it and make yeah. the money, the mm -hmm. ad revenue from that. But you know, it depends. It, 
everything is customized in terms of the type of deal you set up with them, mm. the type of conversations you have with them in terms of monetization, claiming sure. or anything like that. Uh, Can a you lot split of monetization with with that. I don't think so, right? Uh, or, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah. There's a, right, okay. Um, <laughs> but there are a lot of majors are starting to form like form deals mm. with them. Okay. Um, and also, what's happening is there's so many now that they they bulk up into groups. So uh, they're like they're they have agencies. So oh they have gosh, there's yeah. the district, um, there's the nations, mm. and these you, are agencies. Yeah, they're agencies that basically started as all different channels and then just came together. Huh. And now you just work under one funnel and you say, "Hey, we have this new song." And they're like, "Oh, I might work for this channel, that channel," because all of the channels are broken by genres. I mean, they're sure. they're essentially playlists. Right. So they're broken by genres, and then you just work out the details with them. One is going to come uh, go live, mm-hmm. and then they generally will put it up on their channel mm. and put the song up on their channel. Hmm. And you know, I, I think at this point, between UGC content, playlist content, all that kind of stuff on YouTube specifically, mm-hmm. it gets harder and harder to have one main source of where the song is coming from. Either if it's a video, cover art video, or something like that. Right. So you and know, it doesn't why really matter limit with it? content ID. Exactly. I mean, they can they can grab they can monetize every video on YouTube, and then exactly. you make their revenue from that. Interesting. Exactly. Exactly. That's cool. Okay, so with the influencers, you have Instagram, you have TikTok, you have some of these YouTube playlisters. Yeah, um, there are there are influencers on YouTube that are let's say gaming ones. Like gaming, the oh, gaming sure. world is massive, yeah. and there's so much, and that is something that I'll. Uh, Everybody in the music world is starting to tap into because yeah. there's lots of opportunity, mm-hmm. loyalty, right. and money. Right. You know, right. I mean, there's there the fans, the fans stay loyal to yeah. the artists in the uh, the musicians in the gaming community. You know, yeah. so we're starting to uh, experience new like opportunities mm. within the gaming community. Are you involved with the Twitch community at all? We've had discussions with them. Yeah. We've talked about concepts, but nothing that's come into fruition yet. Mm-hmm. But we do work with a couple of artists that have big Twitch followings. And artists so, have Twitch followings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a bunch of musicians that are big on Twitch and yeah. you know, or they love it and they, mm. you know, they'll do stuff on Twitch and have cool followings there. And so they'll so use it's not that just following. for gamers anymore. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Well they're Generally, musicians that are also gamers. Ah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> said, so the other night um, in Miami, uh, we with Steve Aoki, mm-hmm. we went to a gaming tournament, huh. and it was all put together by this musician and produced producer called tiny Uh and he had all of these artists come through and do like this whole gaming event and it's part of a series so he's starting to do it monthly every other month and it's this massive production you know but it's crazy to see yeah 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 Yeah. that's great so right because i've seen on twitch you know they're playing music while they're playing the game and so i'm like man i bet there's some kind of yeah i don't know yeah where's that music coming from it's we've had a couple of records that Mm -hmm. blew up because they you know it was aligned with a game Mm. and fans loved the song because the song was from the game so they Uh, would stream the song non-stop you know like what is how did this happen you know and then well when we get to the root of it it was like oh well it was big on this game no wonder or we work a lot with with on the sync side Mm -hmm. uh we work with a lot of gaming gaming networks period sure so for example we work with fifa a lot you know and sophie tucker has been on the past three fifa soundtracks for their past three games Mm -hmm. and even this year they started doing uh customized jerseys within the game oh wow and we made customized jerseys for sophie tucker oh my gosh that's amazing yeah and sophie tucker is really you know they're known to be like vibrant Mm -hmm. with their costuming so there is like a big giraffe with neon green and you know and it looks really cool and it's you know all through fifa and it's all virtual too which is really cool are they in is sophie tucker in the game like figurine no no No, just the music and then the jerseys okay 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 yeah but there's there's apps where like there's this one app called beat fever and it's a so there's two components to it there's one that is like a guitar hero but on an app Mm -hmm. like a very similar concept where you can like with your fingers do the beat Mm -hmm. on the app and then there's another one which is a virtual reality and you Mm -hmm. go into these little worlds and so we've worked with them on a lot of concepts where you go into their world so we did it with sophie tucker where you go you 
you step into their tree house cool. and everything is set up to look like their tree house, wow. you know? So, and, and they've been exploring that kind of, uh, approach huh. to gaming, you know? Crazy. Um, it's a whole other world. I'm trying yeah. to figure it out. Right, right. Well, yeah, I'm not a gamer at all. Me neither. Uh, I haven't played since uh, GoldenEye N64, um, and I couldn't figure out the joystick, and I kept getting killed by yeah. all my friends. So I'm like, this sucks. I hate this, and I'm done. <laughs> you, <laughs> that's even more than me. I think I stopped at like Mario Kart when Mario I was Kart, 10. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Interesting. Um, okay. So. But right, but that's a that's a very influential market. There's obviously totally. it's a, a gigantic world, a gigantic yeah. market. Yeah. Um, so, so all right. So you have in influencers with Instagram, uh, TikTok, and, it, and to add to yeah, sorry, yeah, 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 sorry to, yeah, yeah. to add to the gaming yes. um, world. Yeah. They, I mean, they're coming up with they've got tournament tournaments and stadiums. They've got. Wow tournaments and stadiums with performances Whoa. so we uh have this artist mako and uh -huh. mako is based in la mm -hmm. he's a singer producer everything he did a song with league of, league of legends okay i think it's like 100 million streams on spotify if not more at this point Whoa. he performed at a stadium huh. with thousands of people all legal league of legends branded. It was all wow. around that, you know? Yeah, so yeah. it's just, I mean, it's, it's absolutely insane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What, like what a world there is within oh the gosh. gaming community, but yeah. now how it's also starting to incorporate music. YouTube also does like, um, really cool, uh, video pieces, mm. uh, of artists like gaming. So I know there was a big one that, uh, Drake did with marshmallow or oh, marshmallow yeah. with Twitch and how sure, massive right. that was. And everybody right. was talking about well, that. And marshmallow with, um, uh, what's that game? Um, oh gosh. Um, Fortnite. Yes. Marshmallow yes, and Fortnite. Yes. That partnership was insane. I'm seeing like nine year olds wearing marshmallow Fortnite t-shirts. Yep. They like, yep. I had to call my little cousins and be like, what is this Fortnite right. thing? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. How, how are you relating to this? I don't yeah. understand. Oh, it was huge. Yeah. And now like that partnership, I mean, was brilliant. Um, that's shout out to Mo Marshmallow's yeah. manager who just like, you know, knew that a lot of Marshmallow fans were playing Fortnite. And so it was just like a natural partnership. Um, Everybody in the industry after that was like, so how do we get that Fortnite plug? Right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, okay. That's crazy. But I guess in the electronic world, like that, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, and with i mean in the gaming in the gaming industry mm -hmm. um with the game you know the gamers the influencers um so are you going directly to gamers then like on youtube um similarly like you would go to uh influencers on tiktok and instagram uh, a lot of them are happening a little bit more naturally and okay. organically because if the artist doesn't have a tie in it's a little harder to just cold message them or okay. email them so whatever gaming alignments we're doing is because the artists are already connected to that world mm. or the gaming opportunity you know like okay. a lot of them might either are bringing it in sure. um and i think like with with the gaming world in terms of let's say on youtube mm -hmm. monetization is still something that's kind of being worked out mm. you know um so we're still we're yeah. still kind of exploring that side yeah. of the industry or con that connection to yeah. the industry. Okay. That yeah. makes sense. Um, and then, uh, all right. So you have the, I mean, influencer campaign. All right. So that's huge. Yeah. That's a big thing. <laughs> that uh, was a big one, a big feat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I mean, that's, uh, that's interesting. And then, um, so you have the, are you doing any digital marketing like with yeah. like Facebook, Instagram ads yeah. or Google YouTube yeah. ads or something like so that? So we do advertising campaigns. You do. Okay. Um, we do do advertising campaigns and I think that's pretty standard around any artist project at this point. And okay. you, I always say this is everything is customized, right? Everything is customized is uh, in terms of how we work a project. Okay. You know, the, the deal is customized. The way the song is created or founded is customized. The way we uh, market everything is specific to that project. Okay. The way we uh, set up an advertisement campaign is specific to that project yeah. because maybe that artist doesn't perform on certain platforms as well as they do on others. So mm -hmm. we'll make sure that it's specific to that artist, you know? So there, I, 
everything is case by case, you okay. know? And I think like, that's like the beauty and also the madness behind right, music, right. right? It's like, yeah. there's no formula, right? no formula right. at all. We've been trying, everybody's yeah. been yeah, trying, right, but there's right, right. still yeah. no formula, you know? So in the, you know, we, we, run an advertising campaign. We mm -hmm. make it specific to the artist. We figure out, okay, like what, what, uh, where do you get the most engagement? Where do you, you know, where do you get the most bang for your buck? Mm. You know, when it comes to doing, uh, advertising, uh, what do we want to push out? You mm -hmm. know, you want to make sure that you're pushing out to all of the p platforms sure. evenly. Yeah. Uh, Do you, you know. want it evenly though? It's like, let's say if their audience uh, primarily exists on Instagram, but not Facebook, wouldn't mm -hmm. you dedicate more of the ad spend to Instagram ads versus, versus Facebook feed ads? Yeah, so if they, if there's a bigger following on Instagram, we'll do, you know, we'll do Instagram, yeah. but when it comes to the DSPs, we'll even it out in terms of, you know, we want fans to listen on Apple. We want fans oh, to listen on Spotify. Oh, you're saying where yeah, you're yeah, yeah. sending people. Yes, I exactly, get it. So the exactly. destination. So what do these ads uh, look like? So let's say you're running um, uh, a feed ad mm -hmm. and maybe like an Instagram story ad. Yeah. Uh, for a story ad, they're going to swipe up. What happens next? Where does it go? So it. So you basically, when you're setting up the campaigns, yeah. you provide everything, right? Sure. So you're providing them what links you want them to. Yep. So generally, if you when you're providing it to the DSPs, you're going to say, okay, half are going to go to this direct Spotify link, half are going to go to this direct Apple link. So mm. they're they're the listening links because you want the you want you want them to do very little work to get them where you want them to go. So you're, right? you, you're not like, sending them to a, a landing page with all the DSPs there to click because that's an extra click. It's an extra click, right, and they won't go. Right. They won't go the extra step. So ah. it, yeah, so there's less click through rates if you mm -hmm. send them to a main landing page as opposed to direct. And and every time we're setting up these campaigns, right. we're checking like, has this changed? Uh -huh. Did this work? You know, we'll so constantly. So how do you get around? Um, I didn't know if you noticed, but you know, back uh, about a year. Ago. Maybe mm -hmm. it was like last, I want to say it was like last spring or summer or something like that. Uh, Instagram swipe up to Spotify, uh, create this page that said download app versus going straight to Spotify. Mm. Do you notice that? Do you know what I'm talking about with that thing? It's yeah, like, I mean, I've seen it, but yeah, yeah. Is there, a, are you are you the one setting up these ads or are other people setting up the ads directly? For So it, it depends on the project. Okay. If it's a bigger project, if it's an album campaign yeah. or something, then we work with agencies that do it for oh, us. Okay, but that makes sense. if it's, yeah. you know, if it's like a smaller project, maybe yeah. a smaller act, something that we'll do stuff directly, you know, we'll do it. Because I, I mean, this is super nerdy and it's getting very much into the weeds, but, <laughs> but like, you know, as independent artists and independent managers, like we, they have to deal with that shit, you know? So it's like, um, people are like in the weeds of it all when you do like, that's what we've noticed and like that, but, but you're right. Like you don't want to put an extra step because people won't yeah. like every extra click, every extra tap that you make them do, you're losing people. 100%. And so like we noticed that and this was something we were battling with for a while. We noticed that Instagram and Spotify just stopped communicating well with each other. And so mm -hmm. it's like for a while, you swipe up, you send them straight to Spotify. It was seamless. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was amazing. And it would open the app on your phone. Boom, you're right there. Now, for like the last nine months, you swipe up on Instagram to a Spotify link. It's a, it's a block page that says download app, even if you have the Spotify app. Mm. So like that was such a headache because it's like, oh, well, I don't know what to do here as a user. I have the app. I don't want to click download app, but that's the only button there right. that's available. So like what we have done is we've added a hack to that where we we worked with a, a developer. So the link that we're sending people to is not actually a Spotify link. It's to a page that looks like Spotify that says play on Spotify. Uh, and so then you tap that and it smart. takes you directly to Spotify because it's like there's no way around that extra landing page. Um, that's just how Spotify and, and Instagram are unfortunate. And we, mm -hmm. I've gone directly to Spotify and I've gone directly to Instagram and I've asked both of them and they both are blaming it on each other. No one has a direct <laughs> answer. So I'm like, do you see what's happening? And Spotify doesn't want this because yeah. it's preventing people from going there. And Instagram doesn't want it really necessarily either because they will lose money if people are if it's not as effective right. but for some reason they haven't worked this out so like we created a hack there that you would click play on and it would just go there mm -hmm. um, but that's interesting about the landing page because we've also experimented with should we send people to like a tone den link yeah or like a smart url pivot 
page or whatever, you know, where mm-hmm. it has Spotify, Apple, has YouTube, everything. Deezer, Amazon, you know, everything. But then, you know, you don't want as many choices there. The more choices they have, the less likely to take it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I think the most we use those is, you know, if we're adding them to press release, if the artist mm, is putting it in the bio of their profile sure. and like, or a link tree, you know, I think link, link trees tree. are great because then right. you can also add like random media links or yeah. other things that they have going on. Uh, their tour dates, everything. Like, yeah. you at everything into a link tree which is fantastic yeah you know so that's more of like a main message but if you right. want a specific action mm-hmm. which the action is either you're gonna play it on spotify you're yeah. gonna play it on apple you're gonna play the video yeah you know we we make it as easy for sure. them to take that action as possible so you are sending people to the dsps mm-hmm. through that and you found that that is effective in at least um the value proposition in terms of like what the cost per clicks you're looking at and then what they generate for streams. Cause a lot, you know, a lot of people will say, um, if a stream is only paying, you know, less than half a penny per stream, uh, but your cost per click Mm -hmm. is at like six cents or something like that. Six cents cost per click. Mm -hmm. How do the economics of that work out? But so how do you, uh, gauge if a campaign like that is successful or what are the metrics you're actually looking at when you're setting these things up and whether it's going to be successful or not? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it also depends on, you know, which platforms we're using okay. and we're constantly examining, okay, well, what worked in the last campaign? How do we want to do it here? What targeting capabilities do we have with the performing, like the artists, right? Okay. So, you know, do we have access to all of the artists, the, uh, the featured artists retargeting data? Because that completely changes... Uh, you know, the type of coverage we're going to get, who we're going to be able to actually target to yep. and same like the, the economics of it. Right, you know? right, right. Uh, when you say featured artists retargeting data, mm-hmm. let's break that down. What do you mean by that? So, I mean, the the collaborating artists that mm-hmm. maybe are not on the label, but right. are in the song and have their own demographic that is different to our artists that yeah. we want to target as well. And can you get that data from you like work with their teams? We or work something? with their teams. That that yeah. all is permission based. Aha. Uh-huh. Because it's in per- their ad manager back end. Exactly. And you need to be able to do like look alike audiences based on people who've taken action from their own stuff. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if they give us permission to do it, everything mm-hmm. is permission based. If they give us permission to do it, fantastic. Uh-huh. If they don't, then we go within our means that we we know, okay, mm. on Snap this this works better on Snapchat and Instagram stories than Twitter or mm. this works better. Oh yeah, you know, we here. didn't talk yeah. about Snapchat. <laughs> Are yeah, they still part of the know, conversation? Some, I mean, still some artist Snapchat? projects do really well on huh. Snapchat, you know, de- depending on who their demographic is. Yeah. You know, I mean, now you can run ads on TikTok TikTok too, and you could do it within the TikTok space. So oh, that's wow. something that we're exploring more as we're continuing to do more TikTok campaigns. Yeah. It makes sense to run ads through there too, you know? Yeah. And so we're doing that as oh, that well. We're sense. starting to see, all right, well, there's a space there that we should be exploring. Are there Snapchat ads? There are Snapchat ads. Okay. There are TikTok ads. They're kind of, they're like Instagram story ads. Sure. There's also the feeds or, you know, like the main feeds and you can right. do it within there. Uh, it's a worldwide, it's a web. Right. It is right, such right, a right, web right, right. Yeah. of, of um, so uh, you, ads. Okay. Interesting. And so uh, you have either agencies or in-house will run all, because to, to master every ad platform, like that's yeah. a lot for anyone. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. I guess I've seen the and Snapchat it's ads. A, it's but, a yeah. beast in an, in, end of its own yeah. you know and so there there's some people that are like so much more um just understanding sure. uh, of like the ad space and then and you know we have them on yeah. on the team and they'll kind of run everything mm. but sometimes when we have bigger projects that we just need like a team and like a professional team right. to run it and tell us okay you should change it here yeah like you should customize it here which is fantastic they're like studying data. the data like, they're studying all the data. Day, yeah you know so we'll yeah. we'll bring them on board and mm-hmm. it always depends on the project if a project is maybe smaller doesn't have as much of a budget mm-hmm. you know then then we'll do things in-house but you know if we're doing like a mass of album campaign or single campaign or something then we'll yeah. bring some people on board so um have like where we're at right now um what would you say is the most effective um platform for ads is it 
Instagram ads, Facebook, Snapchat, mm-hmm. TikTok, YouTube, like where do you, would you say you devote the most ad spend like right now? I would say Instagram stories is the no brainer. Okay. Is the no brainer. So those used, are effective. Yeah. It used to be gotcha. Twitter, but it's really interesting. That's, uh, do- it's that's moving to Instagram for a lot of uh-huh. our artist projects, but it depends on the artist project, especially if we've done a campaign for them before mm-hmm. we'll start to analyze, well, where do they do best? Where mm. do they perform best? And that's where we'll put more money or even during, mm. during the campaign. If we see, uh, this is not doing so well on Facebook, let's redistribute that money to Instagram, yeah. and Instagram stories, then we'll do it there, you know, but mm. I would say Insta and Insta stories mm-hmm. is very much the space okay. that everybody, you know, definitely wants right. to put money into. Yeah. And then depending on what they have more money for, they'll do it there. A lot of people also do YouTube true view ads, especially big labels, mm-hmm. you know, they'll Are those pre-roll. Do, uh, yeah. Okay. And well, basic, they're essentially views. Okay. They're right. essentially views. You get view counts from that? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of major labels will do those to help like boost up views. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. And so you before the new Ariana Grande music video, they'll put like a 30 second much wa- must watch ad, which then counts towards a view of their own mm-hmm. video. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Because they have the budgets to be able to yeah. do that kind of yeah. stuff. Sure, sure. Okay. Um, so, you know, so there's, there's that too. Mm-hmm. Um, I think TikTok will probably be a space that a lot more labels or artist projects yeah. start to, you know, do more of. Mm-hmm. And you can align them with influencer campaigns, you know. So if you have, you know, if you're doing, let's say you're doing a temple activation with TikTok and the song is being featured and then you're getting the ads for the song, uh-huh. then maybe it might make sense to do it within that space. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, does uh, Ultra primarily run the ads for all the releases for your artists or do your artists managers you know take on that duty ever a lot of artists and artist managers will do it on their own okay. they'll do either boosted posts on sure. their socials and so it's a it's pretty str- more straightforward okay so they'll do it based off of release okay. we'll do it we do it around big projects um so that's where generally where we'll focus on doing like a fleshed out ad campaign uh you know mainly during album projects or ep releases or anything like that uh but a lot of artists you know artist managers or artist projects they'll do it on their own especially Mm if if they know how to do it or, yeah. you know, they're well versed in it and many are, you know, yeah. so they'll kind of take that duty and that budget and just handle it in house. Interesting. Um, okay. So, you, right. It makes sense that you primarily handle it for the big single releases, mm-hmm. big album releases, something mm-hmm. like that that you're doing. And then artists just ongoing, you know, yeah. promote whatever they have that they, they need to do. Um, okay. Cool. Well, shit, I could talk to you for hours about this stuff. Like this is so like I get real nerdy about all the marketing and everything yeah. like this. So this is like really awesome to talk to you. Absolutely. Runs marketing at uh, a label. Um, so, well, Bina, thank you so much for, for being on the show. I have one final question that I ask everybody. Okay. Um, and that is, uh, what does it mean to you to make it in the mm. new music business? Oh, man, that's such a good question. <laughs> I feel like I have this conversation a lot because everybody uh, value success differently. Right. So, and I think working in the dance space and in the indie space, you see different types of success, right? Mm. So you've got the label depiction and especially the major label depiction of what success is by radio hit, Mm -hmm. you know, number one streaming song, hit charts, viral (laughs) charts in the millions of streaming, which is fantastic. (laughs) And nobody's mad about that. But we work with so many incredible artists and producers that are successful in their own way. Maybe they produced, you know, albums that became Grammy nominated. So they're, they're in the, they're in the, background Mm. but they're successful because they made that they produced that you know they're so uh they're such an integral part of that massive project Mm -hmm. that then had a radio hit or this you know and had number one and viral charts and this that and the other and then you also just have artist projects that don't see the light of they they never see or hear a mm-hmm. song on the radio, hmm. but they do just fine. You yeah, know, they yeah, stream sure. well, they tour well, they have a sound that people refer to, other artists refer to, like, I want to sound like that artist. Yeah. How can I make a song that sounds like that artist? And they're successful too, you know? So it, hmm. 
it's, I guess it's, there's no right answer, yes. right? It, because everybody measures success differently. Sure. I think if if I'm answering like from from myself, yeah, yeah, I think success is that you as an artist are proud of the art that you put out, mm. that it is really reflective of like your vision, your essence, your everything, and that's what and that's what people connect to, and people mm. feel connected to it, you know, mm-hmm. and that can have different forms in terms of if people are listening to it on the radio or, you know, uh, you're selling out Madison Square Garden <laughs> right, right, or whatever right. it may yeah. be. But if it's true to you, yes, then you, then that's, that's a hit. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. Thank you so much. This of is fantastic. Um, Thank you. Yes, great. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs>